Ladies and gentlemen, as someone who's been around since day one, I am here to tell you it is a very, very exciting day to be a Tiny Whip pilot. Introducing the Mobula 6 Race HD and the Mobula 6 Freestyle HD, both of which carry the all new HD0 AI05, the world's first Tiny Whip flight controller with integrated HD video. This is the most complex board in all of FPV and the most important Tiny Whip release of the year. My name is Jesse Perkins. Welcome back to the official Tiny Whip YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna fly the heck out of these two new aircraft. We're gonna compare the two HD cameras to other HD cameras and other Tiny Whip cameras. Then we're gonna dive deep into the AI-05 itself, investigating the components, diagnosing the VTX output levels, and finally, talking to the man himself, Mr. HD Zero, Carl from Divamath, will be joining us. Sit back and relax, enjoy this deep dive into the most important Tiny Whip technology in a very long time. Let's get into specs and flights in a moment, but first I want to give this launch context in the greater global HD revolution. The first HD0 binary fly was simply called the Mobula 6 HD0. It has a double stack with a separate heavy VTX board, a fragile MIPI cable, and a heavier camera. It also featured a B-Whoop frame. Then, in early 2024, we saw the release of the Mobula 6 2024 Eco with the updated ultralight frame, a lighter camera with no fragile MIPI cable, but it still had a separate heavy VTX board. Finally, with this launch, we have the incredible HD0 video transmission system built into the actual flight controller. That means we get to reduce the overall weight to well under 20 grams and gain a lot of durability by having everything on a single durable PCB. Let's take a closer look at some of the specs of the bind and flies before we get into the AI-05. Both the Race HD and the Freestyle HD come with the same motors, Happy Model 702 28,000 kV. That's a high kV motor, so to pair with it, they've got the brand new HQ Ultralight 1.2 by 0.9 by 3 props. That's a prop with a lower pitch, but it's got the fastest transient response, meaning it can change speed faster than any other 3-blade prop on the market right now. This aircraft also features what I think is probably the best pigtail on any bind and fly right now. It's a 90 degree GNB A30 that's ultra light, so it doesn't have that big heavy plastic you see on some of the other aircraft. And it fits all BT2 batteries that you're used to. The difference between these two bind and flies is the camera. On the Race HD, we've got the Eco camera that we're all familiar with at this point. It was on the previous model. But on the freestyle version, we've got my favorite camera, the Lux, which is capable of 16x9 or 4x3. And personally, I love that 16x9 with a 155 degree diagonal field of view and a more immersive feel because it takes up more of the screen real estate in your goggles. Both of these aircraft also feature the star of the show, the AI-05, the all-in-one board we're here to talk about. The processor on there is the F411 that we're used to, and it's got a BMI 270 gyro with very nice placement. And of course, integrated in the AI-05 is the world famous HD0 VTX, capable of outputting on either 25 or 200 milliwatts of power. I bet what a lot of you want to know right now is how does it fly? Well, as someone who's flown it for a couple weeks, I love this thing. It flies terrific. You know, it flies about like any other 19 gram, 28,000 kV whoop. You've probably flown one like this. You've probably flown the same processor and gyro combo. They work terrific. The big advancement in this BNF is actually the integrated video. So the flight characteristics aren't gonna be that different. That said, I did have a terrific time flying this thing for a couple weeks. And I also wanted to get reviews from some of the pilots I respect the most. So I asked my friend Nightwing to say a few words about flying the freestyle edition. And then I asked my buddy Custom FPV to talk about what it's like flying the race edition. Here they are. Getting to fly Tiny Whip Freestyle in HD is an amazing experience that everyone should try. With the HD Zero AI-05, it takes exploratory freestyle flight to the next level and really increases the immersive experience. I can definitely feel the extra few grams over my regular analog Tiny Whip build, but it's nothing that I'm not used to. Not long ago, we were all flying drones that weighed over 20 grams. I enjoy racing with a lighter Tiny Whoop, but flying freestyle with a slightly heavier build is helpful for carrying your momentum through power loops and other acro maneuvers. I got the chance to fly the racing edition of the HD Zero All-in-One BNF on the track after the first annual Tiny Whoop Pre-Season Invitational, and it was a bunch of fun. Although it was a few grams heavier, I found that it moves around the track quite nicely. I very much enjoyed the clear image of the HD Zero system. It allowed me to see the edges of the gates better and improve my confidence for tighter lines and improved consistency.
All right, here we go with a very short and simple camera comparison. We're gonna be comparing three HD cameras to one analog camera. We're gonna do the HD0 Eco camera, the new HD0 Lux camera, the HD0 Nano Light camera, and then the analog Tiny Whoop Pinch camera. Feel free to mute the audio if you wanna draw your own conclusions. You guys are probably gonna see stuff that I don't see, so if you do, please comment below. All right, here we are at the Tiny Whoop shipping desk where we're gonna compare sharpness, color, and changes in light. So when you look at this wheel, the least fuzziness you see in the middle is the sharpest, and for me that's the Nano Lite, which is the camera that's much heavier, requires a MIPI cable, and is not compatible with the AIO board. But look how close the Lux is. All of these cameras are very sharp. You can also see the analog Tiny Whoop Pinch camera is doing almost as good as the Eco. But don't forget that the Eco camera, just like all HD Zero cameras, is not susceptible to that analog flickering, fading, brightening, and dimming that you see when you're flying around. To me, that's an even bigger plus than the increased sharpness. Flicking the lights on and off, going from very bright to very dark, I noticed that the Eco and the Nano Light were the fastest. But I also thought that the time it took the Lux and the pinch camera to adjust was almost insignificant. It's, it's extremely fast on all these cameras. In a sunny blue sky environment with Pierre's beautiful dog Denali, I thought all the cameras looked great, but I think the Eco and the Lux are actually my favorite. You might be noticing that the Lux camera looks slightly oversaturated. Look how blue the sky is. But keep in mind, we're on stock settings, and the Lux camera has a menu with tons of adjustable parameters, so you can fine tune it however you like. In the low light, the Eco and the Nano Light were the first to switch to black and white, but they also retain the most visibility and detail. The Lux camera retains the most detail and color, but these are the stock settings. You can even adjust the gain on this camera to see even more detail in low light. I can definitely see why the Eco was chosen for the racing edition of this bind and fly. It preserves so much detail regardless of the lighting, and it's very lightweight, and it's compatible with the AI-05 unlike the Nano series. But man, I love the Lux camera. Incredible sharpness, optional 16x9, tons of adjustable parameters, and great detail in color in low light. It's my personal favorite, but please tell me what you guys think of these cameras. Comment down below. Well guys, whenever there's a new VTX on the scene, it's probably a good idea to do just a little testing. Let's take a closer look at the AIO5's integrated HD0 VTX. Here's my test setup. It's really simple, a wired connection between the VTX to the RF Explorer 5.8. There's no actual transmission, there's no antennas, and the field of view on the drone is absolutely unchanging, so there's not gonna be any changes to the signal that's being transmitted. It's not laboratory equipment, but it's good enough to answer the questions we're looking to answer. And what are those questions? First of all, we wanna know if there's the same power output for every channel on the band. And then we wanna know also if those channels could be wandering left and right and possibly conflicting with each other. So let's have a look at a couple of VTXs right now. All right, first let's take a look at two of the most popular VTXs for Tiny Whoop analog transmission. First of all, the OVX300, here it is on all eight race band channels. You can see the spectrum analysis for each channel. Also the TBS Unify Nano Pro, here it is for all eight race band channels. Even though these channels were tested independently, I'm gonna condense and overlay them like this so you can view them all at once. Now let's take a look at the VTX that came with the HD0 Whoop Light combo. This is the Whoop Light VTX by HD0 on all eight race band channels. And here it is again for the AI-05, the all-in-one that we're looking at today. I'm gonna go ahead and condense all of these once again, even though they were tested independently on each channel. You probably notice a really big difference between the analog and the HD0, and I'm gonna tell you why. It's a little something I just learned about called OFDM. All right, here's the 10 second explanation. Orthogonal frequency division multiplexing is when instead of having one single spike, one single carrier frequency that you're transmitting on, a highly complex digital signal is actually split over more than a thousand carrier signals. And because digital uses way higher quality modulator components, they're not gonna move up and down, left and right at all. They're all stacked very closely next to each other. That's why you see these towers, instead of like a wandering spike, you've got these very consistent towers. They don't move up and down. They don't move left and right. What does that mean for us? It means that HD VTXs are among the highest quality I've ever used. This is an awesome VTX for flying with your friends. And all of the channels are almost exactly the same power output, which is phenomenal. In conclusion, this passes our test hardcore. Number one, yes, all the channels are exactly the same output power. That's awesome. Number two, they're not drifting and overlapping at all. There's a really clear separation you can rely on from HD0. This could be one of the highest quality VTXs on the market right now. 
Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite you to watch a short segment of my interview with Carl Zhao of Devamath Incorporated, the creator of HD Zero. This is a section that includes the story behind the AIO, which I found particularly inspiring. But in a few days, I'm going to release the entire complete interview where we dive into the past and future of HD Zero. We talk about future goggles, 90 FPS for Tiny Whoops, the possibility of a 2S AIO, and a lot more. But I want to do my outro first. I was inspired to do this deep dive by my love of HD Zero and Tiny Flight. Since the beginning of Tiny Whoop, scratchy analog video has been one of the first things people bring up when I show strangers Tiny Whoops for the first time. It's not a system that was made for FPV, it's a system we inherited from old security cameras and old TV technology. This launch is a huge step forward on the path to replace that inherited technology with something much better. And like I said, it is a good day to be a Tiny Whip pilot. Special thanks to my friends Nightwing and Custom for helping me. Thank you very much. Also, a special thanks to Ryan Quellet, IB Crazy, Carl Zhao, and Happy Model for helping me make this video. I really hope it earned your subscription, but regardless, thank you so much for watching. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce my friend, Carl Zhao, Mr. HD Zero. So getting to the all-in-one board, which really is the star of the show when it comes to this bind and fly. This bind and fly is about to become the most popular tiny whoop in the world. Um, there's the race edition and, of course, the freestyle edition. But the star of the show really is this little chip right in the middle, the all-in-one. And uh, it's the most exciting part of the build by far for me. And I just wanted to ask where the idea came from and how it all started. Yeah, that was like uh, one year ago. It's uh, in MotoGP Champs, 2023 October time frame. I met Ryan Collett and uh, David Avery. They suggest the AIO that can integrate HD0 VTX. That would be a good fit for Tiny Wolf. I come back. I talked with Jason from Happy Model. And uh, we have a great discussion. And we decided to do it. We decide to do so just because it's not easy. It's because it's hard. It's it's very hard. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, what were the goals of the project? Was it as simple as integrating an HD Zero video transmission system on board and uh, a flight controller? Were there other goals other than that? Yeah. Initially, I thought just to combine those two boards together, but. Apparently it's not. If you have a HD Zero Whoop Light VTX and any analog AIO, you, you will find out it's not possible to just merge them. So, but we have decided to do that. So I, I need to find a way to do it. So the, the MIPI connector you will find is the first thing it need to be go. Mm -hmm. You need to go. So, the MIPI connector is like kind of fragile and uh, bulky. It's just no room for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but removing it will have face two consequences. One, the user cannot use the current MIPI cameras. Some users will complain. The second, what to use to replace the MIPI. I know there's a HD composite video can do the video with the single line. But I don't know it's fit for the oops. So mm -hmm. that's why I designed the HD Zero Eco VTX and the Eco Camera just to verify as dear how it works in the tiny world. And uh, it's 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 become okay, then I decide to go further. Yeah. The next challenge is the the durability. So I think we try to reduce the weight, but I think durability is my higher priority. Be just because, so you, you have two boards. One is a flight controller, where the other is a HD0 VTX. The two stank, that's, that's, that's not durable. It's less durable than the single board. Mm -hmm. But the current uh, AIO, so the AIO5, it's like, a, 14 layers PCB. It's almost as complicated as a PC motherboard. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say, I would say probably, I, I don't know, I guess it is the most complicated board in the FPV industry so far. Wow. Yeah, but anyway, 
I am thinking putting such a complicated board into a drone, which is frequently crashed, is kind of big risk. It has to be robust. I, I cannot like let people buy an expensive AIO and uh, it's easily broken. It's, it's not acceptable. Acceptable. That's why I say the durability is a top priority over even the weight. Yeah. The, the third one is the interference. You know the ESC and the UIS transmitter or receiver and the, the HD0 VTX, they all transmit. They interfere with each other. That's, it's, it's pretty challenge to separate them. Yeah, the last thing is the heat. You know the ESC and the HD0 VTX generate a lot of heat mm -hmm. and the feed, heat affects the gyro and the UIS sensitivity badly. So I have a third, I have three iterations just to balance the heat and the, the layout. It's, it's quite a challenge in this project. It's taken me almost a year to do that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, and that was actually my next question.